In this video I'm going to show you guys how to use the legendary Photoshop action. So what the action does, it creates some really cool uh, light effects over your photo and basically the way it works is, it, is that you can actually plot where you want the lights um, in your design. So for example, uh, so for this effect I plotted these three shapes here and they essentially turn into my light source and you can see the effect there and there's like I did a little bit of post work with the layers after the action's finished. Uh, yeah, customized a few to add some um, some cool highlights and yeah, some some color options you can play around with. So I'll show you how to uh, mess around with all that. So what am I actually going to do? I'm going to go through three examples. Um, I'll do this guy first. I'll put a link to this um, stock photo down in the description if you want to download it and follow along. Uh, might make it easy for you. Uh, second example, I'll go from this to this and I'll show you just how I customize the layers to um, get that result and then lastly we'll go from this photo to that one alright so let's get started I'll close this down whoops just close the photo I want to work with uh, this one alright so here we go so a few things uh, you're gonna have to check off just to make sure um, your file set up correctly and don't run into any errors so firstly look into your uh, layer panel here and your background layer should look identical to this. Okay, so if it doesn't, so for example, uh, if, I open up to if I open up this photo and it was called layer one or something, you can go to layer, new background from layer, and that will just set it as a background. Generally when you open up PNG files um, or any images with a transparent background, uh, you will need to set it uh, as a background, uh, just like that. So still in the layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon. Uh, it's cut off on my screen, but click on that, go down to panel options. And right down the bottom here, just make sure add copy to copy layers and groups checked. Click OK. Uh, next, go to image mode. Uh, just ensure you're in RGB color mode and eight bits of channel, okay? Uh, next, go to image size. And as always with any, um, Photoshop actions, it's best to use high resolution photos. You can see mine's 2200 by 3300, resolution of 300. So a good range for this action is anywhere from, you know, 2000 to 4000 pixels. Okay, cancel that. So what we need to do now is create a selection around our subject. Okay, so this guy, I want to highlight him and I want to fill him with one color. Um, and so what, we, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my wand tool out and hit W. And because he's on um, a background where it's basically one color, I should be able to just click around and select those green areas. Now what I need to do now is inverse the selection. So if I create a new layer now and fill that black, it's actually filled in the background. So I need to uh, invert that. So if I just I'll down Control Shift I or Command Shift I. That'll inverse the selection. So, uh, what you can also do, um, if you want to, you know, if your subject's got a lot of hair, um, and you want to make a finer selection around the hair. What you can do is go to uh, Select Refine Edge. Okay, and just tick on Smart Radius and drag that up a little bit and start brushing over uh, the edges around the hairline. And you'll see Photoshop will do a really good job of extracting um, the background details away from the hair there. So all the green you can see as I brush away is just disappearing. So you don't have to go into this much detail to select your subject. Um, I'm just showing you that as an example. So, okay, I've got my selection. What I need to do now is create a new layer. So go to Layer, New Layer. Okay, and this must be called Brush, all in lowercase. B-R-U-S-H, okay. Now I just need to fill my subject in with a color. So to fill this selection with my foreground color, I just hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete. Okay, uh, so what I need to do now is load up the brushes that came with the action. So if you just hit B, okay, and right click, uh, what you need to do is replace the current brushes. So just go to this icon. Go to Replace Brushes and select Legendary Brushes .abr. Okay, there's just a couple of brushes there. Um, just ensure when you load up your brushes that the opacity here is set to 100. 
So to check that, just hit B and make sure it's on 100. Uh, now I need to load up the Actions panel. So go to Window, Actions, and it'll pop up here. Just go to this icon, go to Load Actions, and select Legendary.ATN. Okay, we are all set to go now. Now, uh, if you if you twirl open the action here, uh, you'll get an idea as the action plays, you know, how much time it's got to go left by this scroll bar. But there's going to be a pop-up almost immediately when we run the action, and that's going to prompt us to create the light source. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I've loaded my action, I'm just going to click play, and you'll get this message almost straight away. It says, now create a shape of your design, which, which will become your main light source. The shape color will be the color of the light source. Remember, you can create multiple light sources. Uh, please watch this video uh, tutorial on how to do this, so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, after you've created your shape, simply press play on the action to resume the playback. Click stop below to proceed. So, uh, what you need to do is click stop. And what you'll notice, the action has stopped. Um, so what you need to do is create your light source. So, and you've got to do it with a shape layer. So here's your shape layers here, right? So if I wanted to create uh, just a round light source and maybe, you know, orange, I'll select an orange color and I can draw out a shape here, okay? So that would be my primary light source. Uh, all the light would emit from there and it would sort of fade off as it goes, as it travels further down. Uh, but we're trying to, we want to create, uh, we are trying to recreate this. So um, what we need to do is, what you can do is, if you just hit P to get the pen tool out, and if you go to this top left hand corner and change this to shape, we can actually draw out um, our own custom shapes. So I'm just going to change this to a blue, okay, and I'm just going to start drawing out some light sources. So I'm going to create one shape there, hit enter, I'll create a large one here. And also take notice of uh, the light source in your photo. So you can see the light source is coming from the right hand side here, you can see it's um, illuminating his back, you can see on the sword, the side of his face, so take notice of that. Um, I'll add another one just down here. Okay, so the next step is very important. It's really easy. Uh, if you've created multiple light sources, so you can see that it's created three layers here, what you need to do is shift select those three layers and hit Control or Command E to merge it onto one layer. Okay, so you only need to do that if you created multiple light sources. If I just created, say, this one light source here, it would only create one layer, so I don't need to merge anything. So um, that's all you need to do. So what you need to do now is uh, create, uh, sorry, is play the action. Don't click away, from, don't, don't play around in the layer panel here. Just click play on the action, and it is now going to run through to the end. It's going to create all the light effects, and yeah, so the action will take about a minute to play back. Uh, and so I'll fast forward the video and get to the result, and then we'll go through and talk about all the ways you can customize the effect. Okay, so the action's finished playing back and this is the default result that I got. So uh, one thing to note about this action is that I've applied a default color grade um, to it. So, and there are actually uh, 10 different color options to pick. So even though we've um, created a blue light here, you can see this, like, this red overtone. I'll show you how to quickly change that to all blue. Uh, it's really simple. So I'm just gonna collapse the actions panel and look into the layer panel here. Now, uh, the first thing you want to do is collapse all these folders. Okay, so everything's open at the moment, uh, which is really annoying. So just hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac and click on the legendary folder arrow, and that just collapses everything. Okay, so let's go, and the very first thing we'll look at is the color options. So I applied a blue uh, light, so I want like a blue overtone. So if you go into this orange folder, called color options, twirl that open, you'll see there's 10 color options. And if you just turn the eye onto that folder, just go down, turn the eye on, you can see that I've applied a different color look out of each one. So there's blues, greens, purples. So if you use, say, if my light source is red, 
maybe color option seven would work really well. Uh, but I think I saw, I think color option five is the one I used in the um, example. So we'll lock that one in, okay? Um, and let's go back up to the top. So this layer here, reveal original subject color in brackets opacity. Wherever I have a layer that has um, opacity in brackets, I'm basically telling you to experiment with that layer through the opacity. It, it, it affects the design through the opacity. So currently it's set to 20%. If I turn this to 100%, you'll see it looks pretty terrible. What, what this layer actually does, it brings back, it, 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 so it overlays the original colors of your subject on top of the design. So if I bring this to zero, you'll see that all the original colors from our photo are lost and it applies the color grade within the color options folder. So by default, I had it set to 20%, okay? So you can like turn that up a little bit if you wanna bring more of the color in or if you wanna desaturate it a bit more, you can bring it down. So I'll keep that at uh, 20. Overall brightness, uh, this is just a little adjustment layer. Just double click. And if you want to play around with the overall brightness, just drag that middle handle around. Okay, you can affect the uh, the brightness that way. But there's a few other ways to do it as well. So uh, I'll collapse that. This layer here, uh, light brightness. If you double click on this, okay, you'll see that I've uh, I've dragged up this middle handle quite high. And what this does, it affects the brightness of our light source. So if I just bring that down, you see it's quite flat. And as I drag that up the light gets brighter and brighter. So you can um, adjust how bright you want the lights just with that middle handle there. It's really simple. Okay, so I've got over the color options folder. We'll keep going down. Uh, so this layer here, background darkness. Uh, there's two layers that affect the background darkness. One and two here. Again, I've got in brackets opacity, so we'll take a look at the opacity. So if I just click, uh, click hold and drag to the right and left, I'm adjusting the opacity of that layer. So uh, at zero, I can click, hold, and drag slowly to the right. Basically what it does, it will darken everywhere apart from our light source, okay? So you can see as I drag that up, everywhere else gets darker, uh, but this area remains bright. So I'll bring that to about there. Uh, background darkness too works in a similar way. It just affects uh, the brightness in a different way, adds a little bit more contrast. So just play around with the two, um, adjust the brightness, get something that looks cool. Okay, sharpening plus highlights, I'll, I'll come back to that folder. Uh, dust, this folder here just adds those, uh, if you look down the bottom here, as I'll turn that folder on and off, adds those little sort of blurred out um, dust particles. So if you go inside, you've got, I've just called it defocused large. So you can see those there as I move them around. If you want more, just hit Control or Command J. Uh, that will increase the how um, prominent they are. Also, the opacity is set to 50%, so you can just drag it up to 100. Uh, but yeah, you can just hit Control J over and over, make them brighter. You can rotate them, move them around. <coughs> Excuse me. Small ones, uh, if I turn those on and off, you can see those there. Again, you can move those around. Um, you could add, you know, you could add blur in effects. So I could go uh, filter, blur, motion blur, and uh, because the light's coming in from the right to the left, I could set my angle like that. And you can see it's blurring them out. And if I hit Control J over and over, you can see it's added sort of like a a, um, a motion light effect, which is pretty cool. But I'll just undo all that. Dust particles, uh, this, I'll just zoom in here. These are these really faint dust particles you can see there as so I turn them on and off. Opacity set to 11%, as you turn that up, uh, you'll see that that's, that's them there. Uh, if you twirl open the effects, this is a, um, a smart object. So you can see that I've added a smart filter, a blur. So if you turn that off, brings a lot of definition into the particles. I've just added a little blur, give it a bit of depth. Okay, bring that back to 11%. Alright, that's dust. Clouds, pretty simple. Turn that on and off. Just adds a little bit of atmosphere um, to the light source. Okay, uh, you go inside, there's just two layers. Check the opacity. 
This one's at 20%. Okay, so you could um, scale it right up if you want uh, sort of strong atmospherics. And there's that one there as well. You can also experiment um, with setting the blend mode to like screen or add. It will sort of brighten up um, most of your background, but um, depends on your photo. It could look good, it could look bad. Light burst, if I turn this one on and off, hasn't shown up too well in this example, but uh, where's one that's basically <coughs> uh, the light the light burst folder creates this light effect here. So you can see from a head there and a little bit from the hands. Uh, so it hasn't shown up too well here, but depends on your photo. Uh, this this uh, layer here, softened photo details, uh, opacity. So this layer is interesting. You definitely want to play around with this. If I just, current opacity is 60. If I just drag this to zero, you'll see that it brings a lot of definition back um, in our photo. If I bring it up to 100, it sort of softens it right out, sort of adds a blur. Um, you can still see some of the details. So, but it will only affect the areas away from our light source. So you can see it hasn't affected like his back here, the top of his head. So I'll bring it up to zero and I'm just going to start dragging up. And you see it just adds a nice little soft, adds a, adds a it adds a softness to our photo and just sort of helps put a bit more emphasis on where our light's hitting. Okay, so it's sort of the, uh, the focal point of our design. Subject contrast in bright opacity, I'll drag this to zero, 100, zero. So you can start at zero, slowly drag up to the right, increase the opacity, get something that looks cool. Edge glows, if I turn this folder on and off, you can see. Uh, that is where the light is hitting our subject. That's why we create our brush layer here, okay? You basically tell me that that's the area um, where if the light touches that we're gonna add these edge glows to. Okay, so if you, if you look around his head there, it sort of fades off as we come around here. It's because the light, um, I've given the light a radius, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So the edge glows will fade away uh, with the light. You go inside this folder here, um, this edge glows narrow, edge glows wide. Um, you can, you know, you can duplicate those folders to make the glows more prominent. Main photo, uh, this is just like a photo, uh, the photo backing. It's an interesting one to play around with because if you turn this folder on and off, you can see that the light passes further into our subject, okay? Just like that. So what I like to do is I flick the folder on and off and I take a look around the design, especially where the light's hitting, and I can brush, what I do is I brush on where I want that light to cross in. So for example, I'll select this mask, I'll hit B, I'll get my brushes out, I'll right click, get my soft brush here, and I will, yeah, black is my active color. So what I can do, I can just select the mask and start brushing in where I want that light to, to pass through. Okay, so if I turn the folder on and off again. Okay, but I've actually controlled where I want that light to pass through with the mask. I'll demonstrate that again with the next two examples. Uh, but it's really, really cool um, folder to play around with. Main light. That is your main light source. You don't really need to do much with that. Uh, you can sort of play around with the mask if you want, brush away excuse me, any details you don't want. Darken background, don't need to do too much here. Just um, darkens the background a bit. And of course our background layer. Okay, uh, so what I want to do now, we'll go back into the sharpening and highlights folder because there's something, there's a few cool things in here I want to show. This uh, layer here, overall fine sharpening, if I just zoom in here, I'll turn this folder on and off. So what I've done, I've just applied an overall really fine sharpening to just to bring out some of the details. Okay, this layer here, boost highlights. If I turn this one on and off, it's very subtle, uh, but you can see if you look at his eye here. So I turn this on and off. It looks for your highlights in your photo and it just sort of boosts the brightness of it. Currently the opacity is at 30%. So if I just crank this to 100% and then turn it on and off. 
you can see that working much better there so I'll zoom out turn that on and off so depending on your photo um, you might want to crank that opacity up to 100% um, by default yeah I had it set to around 30 cents so pretty low but this layer here is one you definitely want to play around with it's called add strong highlights and I've got in brackets to brush the mask so currently the layer is hidden the layer mask is black so if I turn it on and off it does nothing but if I hide this layer mask just hold down shift and click on that mask you'll see that if I just turn that on and off it's applying really strong highlights particularly around um, the brighter points in our photo like if you look at his hair as I turn it on and off see it makes it a lot more contrasted and oh, on his back here see that so what you can do is just brush in where you want those strong highlights to appear so I'll just grab my white brush because I want to reveal the layer okay and you know I'll set the brush capacity pretty low and I'll just zoom in a bit here <coughs> so I can just brush around his hair now and you see how that's bringing in some strong highlights so remember that light source is coming this way so we want to might turn this up a bit more you want to brighten up the areas where the light is hitting it's like down here Here. Uh, his sword as well. I'll see if I can do more of his hair. So you can see it working really well on the sword here. If you want to adjust your brush size, just use a uh, left and right square brackets okay I'll zoom out uh, control or command zero to fit it to screen so if I turn this folder uh, sorry this layer on and off now see how you can you can clearly see where I've brushed in some additional highlights and it really helps sell the effect a lot more like the light is really hitting that area and if it's too strong just play around with the opacity of the layer so I'll bring this to zero Excuse me, and I'll slowly drag to the right. You know, about 65% opacity is good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open up the next example, and I'll just go through the motions of customizing it, just so that you start to get really familiar with um, how to use the layers. Okay, guys, I've got to open my second example here. I've just run the action. I haven't touched any layers yet, so this is just the result I got. So I'm going to collapse the actions panel and again control uh, alt or command option on this legendary fold arrow to collapse everything. So I'll just hide that folder for a sec. So that was my um, original photo. I uh, did a really quick job of tracing around my subject. okay, And I created my light source about, I used an orange color, something like that. And I created my light source about here okay so if I turn on the legendary folder you can kind of see yeah that's where it's emitting from all right so let's delete that so let's get into it um, so firstly what I always like to do yeah is jump in the color options folder and just go down the line and just work out what option looks best and you can also combine these folders together I'll show you how to do that Excuse me. So, so for example, maybe I want to use 50% of this layer, so I'll just select this folder and hit 5 on the keyboard. And maybe with layer 1, 5. So I'm using 50% of color option 1, 50% color option 10. So to combine the two to create another color option. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to check it with uh, revealing more of our original color. kind of like it less so I'm leaving at 13 percent uh the overall brightness looks okay i'm going to play, play around with the light brightness so it's double click it's going to i'm going to set my um 
my clouds folder to screen to see what that looks like. I'll keep it as is, I think. Uh, so what I'd like to also do, I kind of don't like how too much light passes in around a sort of mouth and nose and chin here. There's a bit of definition loss. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to identify the folder uh, or the layer that affects the design. So I can see it's the edge glows folder here. So what I can do is just select the folder mask, hit B, grab my soft brush, get a black brush because I want to move a little bit. And I'll just, you know, I'll set the opacity of the brush to about 20% and I'll just brush a little bit. Okay, so I've just removed a little bit of detail from the edge glows. You can see in the mask there. Okay, so just how it brought a bit, uh, sort of how it bring a bit more definition back in that area. Okay, uh, I might turn off the light burst. You can see that, that um, the light sort of passing through the hat there, but it's probably a bit too much of a distraction, a bit too prominent. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to play around with the background darkness layers. So that's a good example. When I turn it to 100%, you can clearly see that uh, it makes everywhere dark apart from a light source. So it's a really good layer to play around with. This one here. Looks pretty cool. I'm just going to jump into the dust folder. I'm going to duplicate the small ones. I might blur it out a little bit. Add a little bit of softness to it. Okay, so looking at this, what I want to do is really work on these highlights here. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to turn off the main photo folder. So now you can see um, where the light passes um, through our subject. So again, I can just use this mask and control where I want that light to pass through. So I want it to pass through like down here. So I'll just um, grab my black brush and I'm just going to just uh, select my pull my brush capacity to 30%. When you've got your brush out, you can just hit like the numbers on the keyboard and you can see it changing up the top there. So I hit different numbers. So I just hit three on the keyboard and change the opacity. And I can just brush that in there. So let's take a look where else I can brush in. Maybe around the top here, the hat, a little bit. Um, maybe a bit down here as well. <coughs> that. So what I want to work on now is bringing out some more highlights, particularly in the hair. So you can see where the light is sort of, uh, zoom in a bit, I want to bring out these highlights. So to do that, I'm going to use my Add Strong Highlights layer, and I'm going to select the mask, grab a white brush, and I'm just going to brush in those highlights. Going to lower my passive to about 40%. Bring in more highlights here. Maybe a bit around the hat. Okay, that is uh, looking pretty good. I'm just going to turn this folder on and off, compare against the original. A massive transformation with really not much effort at all. Okay, um, let's move on to the third example. Okay, so I've got to open the last example now. So I'm just going to minimize the actions panel. Uh, Control Alt or Command Option on the Legendary folder. I'll click that, collapse all the everything. So I hide the uh, Legendary folder. So that was our original photo. I haven't made any adjustments to the layers yet. Uh, that was my uh, quick trace around the subject. And my light source was actually red this time. Uh, I used the red. And I, for my light source, I just use the ellipse tool and I placed it about here. Okay, I took yeah, I took notice of um, where the light source is coming from in, our, in the original photo shoot. So from the right to the left here. So I placed it here. And that was 
the result. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I delete that. Okay, so let's go into the co options folder and go down the line. So I also want to go for something that's a um, uh, pretty warm tone because we're using a red light. So actually, that looks pretty cool. But in the example, uh, this is the color I'm going to use, color option 7. So let's stick with that. Okay, let's um, take a look at the light brightness. Bring it down a little bit. I'm just going to turn the passive of that layer to zero. Brings out a bit more definition down here. This one, just use a little bit. Uh, the dust, don't mind it how it is. Um, another cool thing you could do, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is if I uh, duplicate this folder, Control J or Command J, uh, I could merge that onto one layer, Control E or Command E. So now I've got all my dust layers, all my dust um, on one uh, one layer. If I set this blend mode to overlay, it sort of blends uh, much better with our background. Now what I could do, I could add some like um, some light effects to this. So I could go filter blur, radial blur, okay, and I'll yeah set the amount to 100, set it to zoom, and basically I want to place the blur center roughly where our light source is. So maybe like there. Click OK. Okay, I'm just going to hide the original dust. And I'm just going to duplicate this layer a few times. Control J. So you can see it really starting to show now. I'm going to merge them again. Shift Control, the, uh, Shift select these layers. Control E. Set this back to overlay. And I'm just going to hit Control F to repeat the uh, the radial blur command. So you can see Control F or Command F. Hit it again. Okay, so you can see I've just added some nice little uh, light bursts from basically the, the shape of our or the position of our dust. Might actually keep the dust on as well, just adds a bit more light. Might check it out in screen. No, nah, too bright. That'll do. Okay. Clouds, I'll turn this on and off. And No, nah, I think I like it how it is. Maybe lower the passage down just a fraction. The light burst looks pretty cool how it is. Jump inside this folder, I've got this adjustment layer here called light burst color. You just double click on that, play around with this hue slider, you can actually change the color of that light burst. Okay. Soften photo details, passive, so I'm gonna What looks cool with this is like as I up the opacity, it makes it look like there's a lot of atmosphere, uh, like a lot of fog or something. So I'm just gonna looks pretty cool. Now my main photo folder, I'll turn that on and off. You can see where the light passes through. That doesn't look too bad how it is, but I want to control that a bit better. So I'm gonna use my mask. Grab the black brush. And I'm going to just brush brush in where I want that light to cross over our subject. Uh, if you hit X while I've got your brush tool out, it'll flip from black to white. So now I can sort of erase what I just did. X to bring it back to black. Uh, I'm just going to... Kind of looks cool up around the face here, so I turn it on and off. You can see a bit of the red sort of pass through. Let's see if I can brush that on. Something like that. 
Okay. Uh, now we need to work on these highlights. So we jump inside here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Grab my white brush. Uh, I'm drag the opacity up. And just going to start brushing in. Adding some extra highlights. Particularly around here. A little bit on the hair. Oops. It's going to lower the opacity of this light burst. Uh, now we'll jump over here to the sword. Okay, control or command zero to zoom out. I'll just turn this uh, layer on and off. So you can see a lot where I've added those extra highlights. This has made a really cool little addition. Um, sells the effect a lot more. Even on the sword there. Now as we were brushing it on at the time, it didn't look like it was doing much, but when you turn this on and off, you see how it's just added some really nice highlights along the edge. So what you can also do is uh, what, we, what we can do is also add a lens flare uh, to this. So to do that, uh, we could go, just select the top folder here, legendary, go Control Shift N or Command Shift N, create a new layer, call it anything, uh, fill it black. So if you hit D on the keyboard, uh, it will set our foreground color to black and to fill that layer, Alt or Option Delete, fill that black. Now I'm going to go to Filter, render lens flare and so we've got four different options here different different types of lens flares so i could go like something like this just be wary let's see if I, when i move that around how it cuts off in the corner here um, so just position the lens flare you play around with the brightness as well uh, so i'm just going to go okay now, how do we get this to blend with our design? What we need to do is uh, set the blend mode of our layer to screen. Okay, so that'll remove everything that's black. And now we can move this layer around and position it over our light source. And we've got a lens flare. Control or Command T to rotate it. Actually, I liked it probably how it was. Now, I don't like these colors here, this blue, green, yellow. So what I could do is hit Control uh, shift u or Command shift u desaturate it. Now if I wanted to add a little bit of red to this lens flare, what I can do is hit Control u or Command u and click uh, Colorize. Drag up the saturation. So you can see now, when I play around with this hue slider, I've actually applied um, a color to our lens flare. So you can see they all look pretty cool. That green looks pretty cool. Um, uh, what am I doing? I just keep it green. Now, uh, what what I want to do? I don't like the way the sort of lens flares illuminating um, her entire body here. So if I turn the light on and off, you can see it's it's brightening up quite a bit. So what I could do is uh, if I hold down control or command and click on our brush layer, it will select our subject. Okay, now if I just hit the mask button here, down the bottom, click that, you'll see what it's done, it is applied, it's restricted that lens flare to just our selection, which is our subject. But what I want to do is I want to invert that selection. So just hit, just uh, select your layer mask, hit control or command I, invert it. So now the lens flare appears behind our subject. But what I can do is now brush in, I can control where that light passes through. So I'll grab my white brush because I want to reveal the layer. Okay. Now you see if I start brushing, all I'm doing is bringing back the lens flare like that. But I just want to 
you know, just brush a little bit. Uh, okay, so if I turn this way on and off now, so without the mask, it looks like that. With a little bit of mask work, sort of really restricted the light. Uh, if you if you double click on the uh, mask here, okay, you get these options. You got density and feather. Uh, what you can do is you can feather this out. Okay, so it's basically uh, if you can see that if you can see the mask is up uh, when I play around with the slider, you see how it becomes more blurred. Basically, we're just blurring out um, where we brushed on, so it can it can make uh, make it appear much softer. Or you can hit density, which will start to fade back to the original state of the layer without the mask applied. So even after you've brushed on um, to the mask, you can further adjust it with these handles. Which is really cool. I'm going to hit Control U again uh, on the layer or Command U. Might go for a bit of an orange. Okay, uh, that is looking pretty sweet and uh, I think we're done. Uh, so that is how easy it is to use this action. Uh, actually, one thing I might go into if you want to add, if you want to try and add some more. Um, some more sort of light rays behind your subject. What you can do is, uh, if I hold down Control again or Command, select our brush layer. Okay. Now, if I select the background layer and hit Control J, it's duplicating that sub uh, out selection off our background. So I'll bring this up to the top here so you can see. So all I've done is I've duplicated our subject off the background. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if I go to Filter. So filter blur radial blur. Okay, I can move this this um, center again to where the light is. Okay, and I can just hit Control F, Command F to repeat that again, and maybe one more time. Okay, so you can see I've just completely destroyed the design. But if you set the blend mode to screen. Okay, you can see we're starting at something that looks a bit more convincing. I'm just going to drag this down the layer order. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a mask. And now I can control where I don't want that effect to appear. So I grab my black brush. <coughs> I'm just going to brush away there, down here. As I'm brushing away, I'm changing the opacity of my brush as I go, just hitting the numbers on the keyboard. Okay, I'll turn that on and off. So that's another cool way you can just add some subtle light effects. Uh, we'll just lower the opacity a little bit. Subtle is usually always better. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? I think that's, I think that's it. It's going to turn up the sharpening a little bit. All right, let's compare this against the original. There's our before, and there's our after. So the action is just a really neat way to add some super cool light effects to your photos. It's really simple to use. Just um, if you're stuck, just jump back to this tutorial. And um, yeah, just take notice of what I do with these layers. Um, but I'm sure after you've played around for a few minutes, you'll get the hang of it and you'll have a lot of fun. So uh, any questions, uh, let me know and I'll help you out. But yeah, if not, have fun using the effects. Thanks.